Good Wednesday morning and a happy Thanksgiving to everybody from Pastor Rob and from the church at Sugar Tree Ridge. We want to hope everybody has a happy, healthy, safe Thanksgiving season and uh, never forgetting to thank God for all the blessings we have. I want to do a short devotional, maybe a little longer than usual, but the reason I'm doing this devotional this morning is because I've had this question over and over uh, during the time of the riots, during the time of shootings, during the time of civil unrest. Uh, and during a time in an election where Christians thought that uh, overwhelmingly that Donald Trump would be elected president, which would be fine, but whatever, it's not going to change what we do. We're still going to do what church does. We're still going to look after our families. We're still going to go to work every morning. And so the question I keep getting is, where is God in all this? Some people are very disappointed, very discouraged, very nervous about the future or what is held in the future, very nervous about the next four years. And I think, number one, we need to stay focused on God. Uh, whatever happens, happens. Um, God is not fooled. God is not surprised. God is still in charge. Now, that being said, I want to say that the power of God by our decision has limited. We have limited the power of God by our decisions. And that is what I want to say is this uh, era of time that we see coming to America, which may or may not be bad, we don't know. We don't know what the future holds but certainly appears to be disheartening. Um, we have limited the power of God, and this began way back in the 60s. And let me give you an example. First of all, in uh, 1960, it was declared we were having a sexual revolution. All the norms, all the restraints on sexual activity with the founding and invention of the birth control pill, it opened a whole new era of sexual uh, rebellion and, and freeness that went against the Bible, which says that sex is for marriage alone and the marriage bed is not defiled. Number two, 1962, June 25th of 1962, prayer was deemed unconstitutional in schools. Here we push God out of our schools. We push God out of our sexual habits. We push God out of our marriages. Number three, uh, 1965, they elected the most liberal uh, government since 1938. He was a senator of the House, I can't remember, but was one of the most liberal-leaning arms of government at the time, 1965. 1973, Roe v. Wade uh, occurred, and a woman had a right to choose. Now, I'm not against a woman's right to choose. I am, however, against abortion, a terminating of a life that was not deemed medically necessary to save the mother's life. Number uh, three in 1975, after these, or after, this, after these things and after all these decisions, we lost one of our first wars, the Vietnam War. A terrible time, a terrible time to be a soldier. We didn't even thank soldiers for coming home. As a matter of fact, we have a soldier in our church who came home from Vietnam, and we finally thanked him for his service, and he said it was the first time in 44 years he'd ever been thanked for his service. And so these are sad times. And so I just wanted to look at a few things. God is in this, but we, by our decisions, and I think one of the worst messages to ever be preached was that Christians should remain out of politics. I've heard that message preached by preachers, and I disagree with that wholeheartedly. Christians should rise up, God-fearing people who uh, uh, that live by biblical truth should be running for office and should be in power. We have let that power, political power, go to the wayside and go into the hands of people who believe differently. And so... It doesn't necessarily mean that's bad. It just means we don't have people running the government who live by biblical principle. And so we have limited God's power. We have pushed God out. And then we ask God, uh, what's going on? Where is God in all this? Well, he's here. He knows. He's not learning anything new. He's not discouraged. He's not defeated. But we have limited his power for generations now by taking him out of schools, by aborting our children, by uh, defiling his laws for uh, sexual behavior within marriage, and so on. <clears throat> and so, I want to give an example from the book of Jeremiah. Although this applies to Israel, this also could apply to America. And so, if we look at Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 27, 26 and 27 here, there's a verse here that says, their kings and their officials and their priests and their prophets say to wood. What they have done is they've replaced God with wooden ashtaroth poles, things that were other gods, gods made by the hands of men. They replaced the living God 
with false gods. So they say to the wood, you are my father, and to the stone, these stone gods, these stone altars they had made with their hands, uh, at, rather than live, uh, uh, worshiping the living God, they say to these stones, you gave me birth, you created me, you are my father. They have turned their backs to the living God, and they have not turned their faces to me. And when they are in trouble, they say, come and save us. And God says, and he answers this in verse 28, Where then are the gods you made for yourselves? Let them come, if they can save you when you are in trouble. For you have as many gods as you have towns, O Judah. And you can say, O America, what are our gods? Um, people in Hollywood, uh, our education system, our jobs, our careers, our positions, our power, uh, our reputations, things that, that override our identity in anything other than God has become our God. And uh, a guy asked me, well, how, how can you tell the priorities in people's lives? And I said, give me your checkbook. Uh, let me see, are you tithing every week as God commanded, 10% to the church? Or do the things you buy, um, like your cars, your houses, your, your hobbies, do they override and make it impossible for you to tithe to your church? If you do, if that's the situation, then you have made these other things your priorities and not God. He's not your priority. Your priorities are perhaps your entertainment, the places you hang out, your social circles, those things become more important and they overshadow the, the place God should have in your own life. And so God is out. God is out. And then when, when something happens, we rush to God and say, come save me. Well, we've brought this upon ourselves. And so that's where we're at. And so let's go a little further here. And I pulled my pen out of my marker here. Jeremiah chapter 6 uh, it says, here's another thing. What do we have a problem with today? Uh, people listening to the word of God. What The word of God is offensive to them. For, uh, Jeremiah 6.10. And another thing is with our sin habits and the things that we do when we disobey God. There's no humility. There's no repentance. There's no remorse. There's no shame. And this is why we are going to reap the wrath of God. He's, he could stop it if America would repent, but he's going to pull back and allow things to happen that we've brought upon ourselves beginning possibly back in the 1960s. So Jeremiah 6, 15, they are ashamed of their loathsome conduct. They are not ashamed of their loathsome conduct. No, they have no shame at all. They do not even know how to blush. So they will fall among the fallen. They will be brought down when I punish them. This is what the Lord says. If we go over to, uh, Jeremiah 7, 9, will you steal and murder, commit adultery and perjury, burn incense to Baal and follow other gods you have not known, and then come and stand before me in the house which bears my name and say, we are safe, safe to do all these detestable things. Has this house which bears my name become a den of robbers to you? But I have been watching, declares the Lord. In other words, we cannot go through the motion and say, I'm a Christian, but then go live like a heathen and expect God to come bail us out because we have pushed God out. We are not Christian if we are going through the motions, if we are merely Christian in name only. And so where is God? Where is God in American society? Well, he's watching because it says he sees everything, but we've pushed him out. We've pushed him out of our schools. We've pushed him out of our relationships, our career decisions, our important decisions our government and other things. And then when things happen, we expect God to bail us out. And there's a time when he says, I'm not going to do that. So with that in mind, the other thing is this, how do we get God to get active, bring God back? This is what I was saying this Thanksgiving season. This would be my challenge to all families who are celebrating together. If you're together this Thanksgiving season, number one, be grateful for that opportunity. Number two, let's invite God if we can't get him back into our schools, if we can't get him back into our colleges, if we can't get him back into our government, let's at least invite him back into our homes. And that's the thing that I offer to most people when they ask me this question. You, some things may be out of your control, but is God in your family? Because uh, when we come home from work, what do we normally do? We turn on the TV and we go to mental sleep. We don't even talk to each other or we get on our phones. When we were on vacation, you could see people on the beach in groups of threes and fours and fives and families all, none of them talking, looking down at their phones, going through social media, doing whatever they were doing, talking to their friends who weren't even there, but not communicating as a family or as a group. And so this Thanksgiving season, if you want to combat these things that are going on, if you want to combat discouragement, the thing that I would ask during this time is that during this holiday season, that we ask God back into our lives back into our family, 
And we thank him for what we already have and thank him for the opportunity we have to uh, invite him and have that privilege to invite him back as he says he will come back. So in Jeremiah chapter 7, uh, it says here, chapter 23, it says that if we obey God, I will be your God and you will be my people. Number uh, Jeremiah 7, 3, reform your ways and your actions and I will let you live in this place. Repent. R obey God and repent. Number uh, Jeremiah 6, 16. This is what the Lord says. Stand at the crossroads. In other words, we have a decision to make to serve God or not to serve God. Stand at the crossroads and look. Ask for the ancient paths. Ask where the good way is and walk in it and you will find rest for your souls. We have a decision to make every single day to take up our cross and follow Jesus or to follow the ways of the world. And so what we need to do is ask for the old ways, ask for the ways of God to come back and reinstitute those into our family and pray that they flood over into society and will make a difference in this world and that we will find rest for our souls. So I pray everybody has a happy Thanksgiving.